we're back at the GSL. You know what that stands for? Uh, run it by me real quick. Greater Salt Lake. Oh. I mean, it makes perfect sense, but nobody ever called it that. They just called it the GSL. Okay, because I was thinking in reference of the Great Salt Lake, which is shrinking. Joke, right? Which is shrinking. <laughs> anyway, this was going to be, this is going to be the last one ever held, which is why the turnout was so big this time. And what an impressive bunch of models. Oh, I'll say. Which is why the national magazines were here covering it as well. Well, they always show up to this, but this was especially important because it was the last one. Anyway, in the next room was the Lynx Project. Uh, and this just sounds something like nuclear. <laughs> <laughs> well, it... It started off as, I, I, not a joke, it was deadly serious from the very, very beginning, but Mark and his friends had this idea to create a car that never existed and then do its entire life and, and convince people, in fact, that it actually was created. This is, this is Mark, the, the creator of both the contest and the Lynx project. And of course, there really was a, a Mercury Lynx, but what Mark and his friends have created here is this mythological car from 1963. And then they've put together its entire history. So what, this whole thing was just created, that whole history, it's just uh, a story? Yeah, and, what? and they spliced this into the actual history of Ford and showing these other vehicles were made at the same time. Right. So they started with the design phase and took that all the way through to here. This is the rollout of the first prototype for the press. And there's the first Lynx prototype. Wow. As that, envisioned that, by these guys. Well, that vision, why didn't it come to fruition? I mean, it should have. Indeed, and instead, here are the cars uh, after abandonment, after the entire project was abandoned and one of the prototypes survived in this garage and was discovered by car enthusiasts who decided to not only restore the surviving example, but to rebuild the other prototypes and bring the project back to life. Oh my goodness. And so they've created this, this Lynx Museum, if you will, where a lot of famous Ford prototypes have been put on display including these, the recreated Lynx prototypes. I, I just stand here shaking my head. <laughs> I, I seriously do. This is, this is taking your fantasy model into a, to an extreme. I know, I'm just sitting there going, why didn't this actually happen? <laughs> well, in the, in the minds of these guys, it did. Well, it did, it's just <laughs> tiny. <laughs> So here we have the, the clay prototype in 1 8 scale in the shops where the prototypes were created. So this is taking the car back to its earliest, earliest beginnings and prototyping the aluminum bodies here in the body shop. Look at that, they've got shavings on the floor and everything. <laughs> The, the attention to detail here is just stunning. The, the hose from the air compressor. Look at the toolboxes. I mean, they're just teeny like my fingernail. Yeah, this is all 125th scale. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's the boss. Oh, oh. He doesn't look happy. Uh-oh. Typical Ford executive. Well, there's a mess on the floor. And here we can see how the prototypes would be created wood bucks would be uh, carved out of wood, formed out of wood, and then the aluminum is hammered over the wood bucks. And they've got a couple of the wood bucks here for a couple of the different prototypes that they constructed. Wow. You know, uh, there were a few Fords that were mass produced this same way, most notably uh, the Cobras. Right. The wood bucks were carved and then the aluminum formed over that and every single car, every production car, was formed directly on the wood buck. And some of the really exotic uh, European sports cars were made the same way. So uh, in this case, they're just making these prototypes because there was only one example of each body type ever built in, in, in the fantasy world of the Lynx project. Right. 
If this looks a little bit suspiciously like a frame straightening system, it sort of functions, I think, in that same realm. If, if somebody knows better, uh, do jump into the comments. But the car has to be completely square, of course, because it's a functional automobile. And this jig is used to make sure that everything is is level and square. Yeah, so it doesn't turn out like one of my model cars. It's a little bit in need of an alignment. <laughs> And here we can see the press rollout for several different uh, models of Ford for 1963, including the prototype for the, the new Lynx. Look at the ashtrays. And the folding chairs. Yeah, it's a pretty elegant event, but here's the press on folding chairs. And But you, you had to put out ashtrays because in 1963, oh, yeah. anybody might light up at any time and it was just expected. Yes. of modeling here is just so astounding the attention to detail well and and detail in terms of the backstory the the fair lane the these other models that were going to be released that year and they've gone to the trouble of creating these new these new cars for 1963 to help sell the idea of the Lynx being a new car yes <laughs> just Talk about just just really creating a world and a history for this car. Right, and it, it didn't exist, but it should have. It should have. <laughs> I love it. I do too. Oh, I want one. Me too. Now, since one of their goals was to create this museum to put these other cars in, they thought it would be fun to recreate a couple of famous Fords from that era, race cars and other prototypes as well. Right. This was an actual event, the Caravan of Stars by Lincoln Mercury, and they've recreated the event, only spliced the, the links into the middle of the whole thing. <laughs> You know, I've heard about this for a long time since you and I have been together, but I've never been up close and personal to it. Yeah, they, these guys have been working on this project for decades. Oh, I can tell. And uh, where this was going to be the very last GSL, it's like, well, let's let's put an end. Let's let's put the exclamation point at the end of the paragraph here and roll out the Lynx project and, and let the public see it. Right, and I still can't close my mouth. And here we have the next chapter in the history of this car, Lincoln Mercury's abandonment of the project. Oh my. So they've hauled the prototypes into this shop and they don't seem to know quite what they're gonna do with them. And so in this artificial history that's been created, the decision was made to destroy the prototypes. Oh my goodness, now I'm gonna ball. <laughs> and, and bury the project forever and hope that everybody just sort of forgets about it because the public was never really informed that the car ever existed. But one 
example survived in this garage. Everybody's dream. You open up that garage door and there's something in there. And talk about a barn find. Oh, yeah. A, a prototype Lynx of a car that nobody even knew existed. And there it is. And there it is. <laughs> and and it's now ready for restoration, Oh, right? boy, yes. And isn't that what you do with a barn find? That's what you do. You know, I've always fantasized about that because every once in a while, you know, you'll hear about somebody that finds an old car in a barn. It's like, what? And in this case, trying to figure out what in the heck you found when it's a prototype for a car that nobody even knew existed. Wouldn't that be fun? I mean, I can just imagine. And when you start to slowly figure out what the heck it is you found, how wonderful is that? Yeah, you better find a good parts department at J.C. Whitney. So how in the world would you find parts for a car that never existed? I guess you'd just start building them yourself. I guess you'd have to. And so here they are rebuilding the engine. That would be the simple part because it's a basic Ford engine. Well, that's good. So here in the engine shop, but now you've got to figure out if all three examples had the same engine and then recreate all three engines for the three prototypes. And the biggest problem is the other two prototypes were destroyed. Right. So how do you approach that? I don't know, get Johnny Cash to make a song about it. <laughs> And the engine definitely looks like something out of a barn find. But again, look at the, the detail in this wrecked engine. And because they want to create the entire world around these cars here in the restoration shop, they're also uh, restoring the original Thunderbolt Galaxy. Oh, that's cool. Or Fairlane. It's a it's Fairlane. It's a Fairlane, yeah. But uh, this is what the original one looked like. The production models look slightly different, but the very first one looked like this. And so they're recreating here the very first Thunderbolt. And because they're getting these cars ready for a car show to roll them out in three weeks, here on the blackboard, they've listed what still needs to be done on the Thunderbolt and the Lynx. Oh boy, looks like they're prepping this one for paint. So I guess this is one of the prototypes, the Falcon Olay? Something. <laughs> and this one's already been painted, a different version of the car, but uh, this one's all done out in its final paint. And I love that. I want that car. Here again, the attention to detail, the vice here on the workbench, the drawers, the Ford parts boxes. Right, and the radio that's plugged into an outlet. And the cement looks so real, it's even got a couple of cracks in it. And they have contracted with Dynacorn International to recreate the missing body parts for the other Lynxes. And here we have Mark Gustafson unloading the body parts with the forklift. Wow, I can't close my mouth. This is just, <laughs> what? That's too funny. I love the figure of Mark. I do too, it looks just like him. It was sculpted by uh, Ken Hamilton. Which, it's hard to recreate somebody, it really is. And here we have the shops at the museum where the uh, missing prototypes are being assembled and painted. Wow, what a clean shop. Well, in reality, I would take my car here for servicing because it's a far cry from the mechanic shops I knew as a kid. Well, and the ones at the beginning when, where the cars were being created, where there's just kind of junk laying around mm -hmm. in those dioramas, and now here for the museum, it's almost surgically clean. Yes, it's very sterile. <laughs>
because these prototypes are going to be rolled out at a car show, here we have transporting them on a jet airplane to a car show. Good heavens. This is a Mustang prototype. Oh boy. And here we have the museum again. Right. With another Mustang prototype in the showroom. Here. Right. That is so cool. And here in the museum, they're showing the entire process of how these cars were recreated. So the wood bucks are on display here. This, of course, requires building a whole new set of wood bucks for the museum. Right. Because every diorama has to be a standalone item. So I'm not even sure how many of these wood bucks they created just for these dioramas. But here's one of the wood bucks that was recreated for recreating one of the prototypes on display in the museum. That's just amazing. It's just amazing that these guys have created this whole uh, history spanning 60 years right. of uh, surrounding mostly this car, the Lynx, but also other Ford prototypes and uh, rollouts and just this whole fantasy world that they've created surrounding this history. Right, I looked at it and I thought, did this really happen? Now this really happened, no it didn't happen, but it, it looks like it should have. And you could convince someone, you oh, could yeah. show this to someone and say, no this is actual history, we're documenting something that actually happened. Right, and you'd believe it because of the reality, I mean it looks so real. And we still have a lot of other things to show from the GSL. We're right. not done yet. <laughs> oh, I mean, you can see by the display there. I mean, there's a lot to cover. There's a lot going on at this car show. It was just absolutely amazing. And so you don't want to miss any of this. So you want to be a subscriber to the channel. So if you've stumbled across this and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink, right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. Right. With some Tuesday fun. Right. <laughs> see ya. We'll see ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.